Hello, I'm Pastor Jim Garrison, and this is the worship service for the Los Banos and the Dos Palos United Methodist Church congregations for February 28th. We're glad that you joined us today. Let's begin our worship with prayer. God, we thank you for loving us so much and for being with us always. Lord, we thank you for this season of Lent leading up to celebrating what you did on the cross and on Easter morning. Lord, help us to open ourselves to you during this worship time, that we could follow you better and know you more deeply. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I invite you to join in our first song that talks about God's grace, God's grace that is greater than all our sins. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Pardon and cleanse within Grace, grace, God's grace Grace that is greater than all our sin Sin and despair like the sea waves cold Threaten the soul with infinite loss Grace that is greater, yes, grace untold Points to the refuge, the mighty cross. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Dark is the stain that we can. bits of information about our church life, we invite you to use the website, and which will be on the screen, umclb.net. And there you can find the church newsletter, you can find former and this worship service and children's um, messages. You can also do online giving through the website. Important announcement is that Next Sunday, March 7th, at the Los Banos United Methodist Church, we're going to be resuming in-person worship. And so at 9.30, we'll be meeting in the building and worshiping there, and we'll need to wear masks, and uh, our, our worship will be modified. And we'll still be putting it online. We're going to be uh, trying to do it live on Facebook, so you can tune in at 9.30 and watch it on on Facebook Live. And if you if you subscribe to this video if you like this video um, then you'll get a notice and it'll tell you that it's on at the right time and then we're also going to be attempting to put it on onto youtube that you could watch it at other times of the day if you're not available at 9 30 
I say attempting because we're still struggling with some of the, the technology as, as our, our needs change. And on March 28th, which will be Palm Sunday, then we're going to be resuming also inside the church worship at the Dos Palos congregation as well. We continue to give thanks for those who are faithful givers during this time and your options for giving. You can um, mail it into the church office. The addresses will be on the screen. You can give through the church website or the Give Plus Giving app to the Los Banos United Methodist Church and to the Dos Palos United Methodist Church. You can mail in to the church office or bring it when you come in person in a couple of weeks. Let's pray now. God, we thank you for all of your gifts to us and for, Lord, the excitement of being able to worship in person. And we thank you that, that you have given us the things that we need, including a surplus with which we can express our love to you, our commitment to you through giving. And Lord, we ask that you would accept these expressions of our love and turn them into expressions of your love through the ministry of our congregations in our community and in our world. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the reading of God's word taken from Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse 39. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. And I want to repeat that last verse. That's really our key verse for this message. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ, God forgave you. God, we ask that these words now, words that came from you through the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, would be helpful for building us up. And that these words that, of Scripture and these words that I bring may also benefit those who listen. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Well, this is the season of Lent, and one of the, the practices, one of the important emphases of Lent is forgiveness and, and seeking forgiveness from God. And so I want to talk, and forgiveness is such a beautiful thing. I want to tell two quick stories about forgiveness, or maybe long-term stories, actually. They, they, they were a long time in the making. The first was in my first church back in Oklahoma, and I was a small town, and this young family in a church, and then I heard that the, the wife had decided to leave. And she had packed up and moved to the next town. And, and I was able to get in touch with her and, and want her to see, you know, why she was breaking up what seemed like a, a beautiful young family and, and, and was sharing. And she, and she poured out to me the hurt that she had felt um, in their marriage in ways the husband had not been supportive. And, and, and each of the things that she, that she mentioned seemed to me a very valid complaint, a thing that needed to be dealt with. But I was struck that some of them went back 10 years or more. And I thought, wow, that's a long time to carry something. Something that should have been dealt with before. And I don't know, you know, how they tried to deal with it or didn't try to deal with it, but I thought you just can't carry things for 10 years. And and they couldn't. Their their marriage broke apart. It's like we need to we need to be able to forgive and, and deal with those things and not have to to carry them. Another story that was a, a happier ending, um, but but also a sad story. It was some some relatives of mine. I was at a family gathering, and and one of my extended family cousins was telling me about the story of how her mother and her aunt, who were both also relatives of mine, um, older generation, how they had finally reconciled, and it went way back to when they were like teenagers, and and one of them, um, their mother was killed, and. And, and it happened, one of them wanted to go to a party, and, and they said, no, and then they, she kind of begged, and, oh, please let me go to the party. So she was able to go to the party, and then while the mother was on the way to pick her up after the party, she was in a fatal car accident. 
and the other sister blamed the first sister for their mother's death. Now that's a that's that's really an irrational sort of thing, but but our feelings are not always rational, and she and she and she held this against her for like 40, 45 years. It was decades, and, and I didn't know any of this, and, and they had and it had poisoned parts of their relationship and who knows what other parts of their lives. And finally, they were able to overcome this. And I don't know how that happened, but, but that, that such an old bitterness could finally be undone and, and, and they could have that family relationship again was, was a beautiful story of forgiveness. It was sad that it took 40 or 50 years to, to bring it to pass, but, but there's power in forgiveness. And so this is a this is a beautiful verse when it says you know to to forgive one another just as in Christ God forgave us. We're commanded to give to forgive the way that God forgave us. Except that you know we really can't do it exactly like God does it for us. Matter of fact, as as human beings, we're not always even sure that we want to forgive at all. When somebody hurts us, um, there's a lot of reasons we that we don't want to forgive, and we're not interested in, in learning how to forgive it. And so I'd like to just take a couple minutes to kind of dispel some false ideas about forgiveness. Sometimes people will say, well, you know, what that person did was wrong. And, you know, I, I can't just, I can't just pretend that it wasn't wrong. I can't um, excuse that behavior. But when we forgive somebody, we're not saying that the behavior was okay. We're not excusing it. Matter of fact, if it was okay, if we could excuse it, we wouldn't need to forgive it. We would just understand, well, it wasn't really their fault. They weren't meaning to do anything bad. Just because I didn't like it didn't mean it was like an offense against me personally. We can understand things, so we don't even need to forgive if that was the case. We forgive somebody because it was wrong. It's declaring this was wrong that you did, but I'm not going to let that that hurt continue on. Another misunderstanding is that, that forgiveness is releasing somebody from all of their consequences. But that's not the case. When, when someone sins, they do something that's wrong and it hurts us, God is still the judge. They have to deal with God for their sins. And there might be earthly consequences as well. If the thing that they did that hurt you, hurt me, was also against the law. They might need to deal with the law enforcement agencies and, and a judge, and, and, and they may have to, there may be consequences. If they may have to pay for something. They may have to spend time in jail. It doesn't, it doesn't always alleviate the earthly consequences from forgiveness. Even God's forgiveness doesn't, you know, there's a lot of, I've done a little bit of prison ministry, and there, you know, people there, have sought forgiveness from God and they've turned their life work to God and they've been forgiven. That doesn't mean that they instantly get out of prison. They still have to serve their terms because there are earthly consequences to our actions. Some people say, well, what that person did, it was too terrible. I just can't forgive it because it was too terrible. But really, the worse the offense, the worse the sin, the worse the, the action, the more terrible the action and, and the more the pain that's been received, the greater the need to forgive. Because when we forgive, we're taking that past injury that happened to us and we're stopping its power to continue to hurt us. We're saying that we're not letting that, that past wrong have continued effect. And, and, and the worse that the past wrong was, the more important it is to be able to cut it off and saying, that's in the past. Forgiveness is also not equal reconciliation. And that, sometimes we get confused on this because say, say you have a good friend and your friend did something that, that really hurt your feelings. And, 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 you know, it was wrong of them to do that. And then you, you find, you talk about it and you, you decide that you're not going to let that be a barrier in your relationship anymore. And you forgive the person and you become friends and you still have barbecues together and, and, and the friendship is restored and your relationship is, is reconciled. 
you're not going to be able to reconcile. So, you know, if it's a serious offense, I mean, it's a little thing. You could just kind of ignore it, you know, forget about it. But if it's a serious offense, you're going to have to, to forgive that person in order to be reconciled. But, but maybe you can't be reconciled. Maybe that person won't stop doing that thing. Maybe you've been injured by somebody and, and they just keep doing that sort of thing. And it's not safe for you. Maybe you've been in an abusive relationship. You can forgive that person for what they did. That doesn't mean you give them the opportunity to keep doing it to you. Um, if, you're, if your neighbor um, stole some things from you, you might be able to forgive them, but you might not choose to invite them to house it for you when you go on vacation. If you haven't yet developed trust, if you don't think they're going to act differently, then it would be foolish for you to trust them. And so reconciliation is different than forgiveness. It needs forgiveness to get it started. But sometimes even when reconciliation is not possible or advisable, um, forgiveness is still possible and, and so necessary because it, it heals ourselves. Someone said that, that when we don't forgive, it's like carrying around a burning coal in our hands with the intention that we're going to throw it at our enemy. And the longer we hold on to it, who gets hurt the most? And another objection to forgiveness, sometimes people will say, well, I know I'm supposed to forgive, but I just can't do it. I just can't forgive that person. Well, that might be true. And we're going to talk some more about that. But, but Jesus can. Remember that when Jesus was, was hanging on the cross, he looked down and even at the people who had called for his execution, even at the soldiers who had pounded the nails, nailed him to the cross, whipped him, spat on him. He prayed, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And if Jesus has that capacity to forgive those that hurt him and to forgive me who rebelled against him and you, if he can forgive that, he can forgive my friend or relative who said some harmful thing to me and hurt my feelings. Even if maybe I can't, Jesus lives in our hearts, if we're followers of Jesus, and he can do it, and he can do it through us. We can't do it on our own, but, but Jesus can. So sometimes we get these commands and, and we, we hear them as, as a burden. Oh no, I have to forgive people? Oh, but I don't like that person. I, they, they hurt me. I don't want to forgive them. And we, and we see it as this, this burden that comes upon us. But Jesus said that his yoke was, was light and easy. It won't be ill-fitting, that it's, it's going to be a, a good yoke. And so I don't want us to think of it as a, as a bad news that we have to forgive, even though we are commanded to forgive, but, it, but as good news that we can forgive. It is possible to forgive. You don't have to be stuck with your bitterness. You don't have to be stuck with that unforgiveness eating away and poisoning your life. You can be set free from that. I saw a beautiful um, posting on Facebook and it said, um, forgive them. Forgive all of them. The more, all the thems you have, forgive them. And, and the more you forgive, the lighter you'll feel. A beautiful idea. Whatever, whatever sins have been, whatever hurts we're carrying, whatever bitterness, the more that we can let go of it, the better for us. So that's the good news, that we can forgive. Now the bad news, even this verse says to forgive just as God and Christ forgave us, is that we can't forgive exactly the way that God does. But the good news is that we aren't really expected to do it exactly as God does. So I want to talk about some of that difference, that the God's forgiveness, when he forgives, he does forgiveness perfectly. We don't do it quite as well because we're not God. So I want to look at how, how our forgiveness is different than God's forgiveness. And first off, our forgiveness is different because unlike God, we often have to forgive ourselves. God doesn't have to do that. God is perfect and sinless, and but we have to forgive ourselves. And if we're mature, if we're honest about ourselves, if we're spiritually mature, then we know, we realize the sins that we've done, the things that we've done that were wrong, and we know the worst about ourselves. And it takes very bold faith 
in God's truly amazing grace to forgive ourselves. That song, you know, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound That Saved a Wretch Like Me. If we know that we're a wretch, if we see our sin in its, its awful ugliness, but we also see God's grace and how amazing it is. We have a bold faith in God's grace. And it takes honest confession that we're able to say, I am a wretch. I did some bad stuff and that was wrong. And yet, I believe in God's forgiveness. I'm not glossing over my sin, but God's grace is greater than all my sin. It takes, it takes a very bold faith in God's grace to be able to, to say, the bad thing I did in the past is irrelevant to who I am now and how I feel about myself. The bad thing you did in the past is irrelevant to who you are now. In Christ, we're a new creation. The bad thing you did in the past is irrelevant to who you are now and how you feel about yourself, how we're called to feel about yourself. I like the words of um, Corey Asbury has a song, The Father's House, and it says, failure won't define me, because that's what my father does. If our heavenly father is the one who defines us, who gives us our identity, who gives us our self-understanding, who gives us how we feel about ourselves, it's not what we've done in the past. It's the relationship that we have with God and who he says that God our Father defines us. The bad thing you did in the past is irrelevant to who you are now and how you feel about yourself. If that's all that you get out of this sermon and you actually believe that and do it, put it into practice in your life, then I am going to be so amazed and happy and I hope that I can really believe this too because this is powerful. This is life-changing. So one thing that's different about our forgiving is that we have to forgive ourselves. A second thing that's different about our forgiving is that sometimes we have to forgive God. Now, I, I, I didn't come up with this idea on my own. I read this someplace, and I'm a, sorry that I can't remember where I read it, and I can't give credit to the person. But when I first read it, I thought, that's ridiculous. Why do we have to forgive God? God is sinless. He doesn't do anything wrong. God is good. God is great. God is holy. God forgives us. We don't have to forgive God. But sometimes, the forg- just like I told the story about my relatives where, where the one sister had an irrational um, bitterness against her sister for something that wasn't really her fault, she still had to forgive her because she had that bitterness. Sometimes we have an unfair, irrational grudge against God. Sometimes we feel wronged by God because we didn't like the way that life turned out, that some tragedy happened and we say, why didn't God intervene and do a miracle and stop that? Why did God let that happen? Or why did God make that happen? Depending on how we tend to phrase things and see God's work in the world. And, and we feel this anger and this bitterness towards God and that anger becomes a barrier to our relationship with God and that we need to let go of that if we're going to have a good healthy relationship with God. It's, it's very similar to forgiving, even though there was no actual sin or wrong that God did, but it's just our interpretation of it. But still, we can go to God and we can tell God how we feel. And we can say, I, you know, I don't understand why this happened. Why did you let this happen? Why? I don't understand. And it hurt me a lot. But still, I believe, God, that you are good and that you are with me. And, and I want to have that relationship with you, even though this tragedy happened and it hurt me a lot. And even though I, I want to let go of the anger that I have against you because I know that you're good, God, I don't want to trust you. And so that's, sometimes we have to do that, which is similar to forgiving God. Another way that our forgiveness is different than God's forgiveness is that God is eternal. And so the timing of his He's not bound by time. So the timing of his forgiveness is different than ours. So God forgives simultaneously all of our sins at once. He, and he forgives instantly. We say, God, I confess my sin. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sin. Please forgive me. Come into my heart. Wash me clean. I accept, I accept that forgiveness that you offer through Jesus Christ. 
Fill me with your spirit. I want to follow you. When we give our lives to Christ, he forgives all our sins. All of them, right then. It doesn't, God doesn't have to think about it. God doesn't have to work up to it. God just forgives us right then. And God forgives us permanently. For us, sometimes it's a little harder than that. Um, and particularly that instantly part. It's hard for us to, sometimes we can't instantly forgive. Sometimes when the, when the wound is still very fresh, we just can't bring ourselves to do it. And, and, and forgiveness sometimes comes gradually and slowly. Sometimes, sometimes we aren't ready to forgive just yet. And, and it's like, God, you know, we could pray, God, I, I can't do this on my own, but you can do it through me. God, will you forgive this person through me? But we might not even be ready to say that. We might say, God... I want to forgive, but I just can't. And then, oh, well, actually, that's not even true. God, I don't even want to forgive this person, but I know it's right. I know that it's what's healthy. I know that's what you call me to do. And so I, I want to want to. Lord, will you change my heart? Will you change my heart so that I want to forgive? And will you help me to do it? And in your name, even though I don't want to yet, I, I forgive them. I pronounce forgiveness in your name. And sometimes it takes us a while to work up even to that. And, and so when we're dealing with somebody else who needs to forgive, it's not our place to, to rush it. Not our place to say, now you need to do this now. Just invite them, say, you can forgive this. This is what is healing. This is what you need to do. And, and let God work them and move them to the place where they can actually do it. And when God forgives, he forgives permanently. He doesn't take his forgiveness back. He doesn't, you know, make us ask for forgiveness again and again for the same thing. But when we forgive people, we, we might genuinely mean it at the time. And then sometime later, we find ourselves kind of gritting our teeth and, and being mad at that person over what they did in the past. And sometimes... It's because the thing they did in the past is continuing to have effect on us. The, the, thing, the, 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 the wrong they did to us once is hurting us again and again and again because it's changed our world. Maybe, maybe someone's gone through an ugly divorce and, and all the, the frustrations of dealing with the divorce and child custody issues and those kind of things, they continue. It's like, you know, if you hadn't a done what you did before. If you hadn't have broken up our marriage, we wouldn't have this problem now. And so it's easy to, to feel the anger all over again. And so we need to forgive again. And so sometimes, or, or just, we just remember the past and it starts getting to us again and say, wait a minute, I forgave that. Jesus, I already gave that to you and it is still yours. And I feel the anger again. I just give that to you now also because it, I, I, that goes with it. And speaking of anger, sometimes when we forgive, we forgive with some anger left over because we're not God and we can't do it perfectly. And so I, I really appreciated one of our, one of the pastors in a previous town I served, preached a sermon on forgiveness. And I like this illustration of what happens when we forgive, that sometimes when someone hurts us, we feel like we've got we've got this slip of paper that is like a promissory note, like they owe us now. And that I have the right, because they did this to me, I've got this piece, little piece of paper here that says that I have the right to hurt them back, because they hurt me now, I get to hurt them back. And so I'm, I'm waiting for my chance, and, I'm, and, it's, and I've got the right to be mad at them and angry at them because they hurt me, and I've got this little you know, piece of paper here. And when we forgive, it's as if, it's as if we take that paper and we flip over and we write on the back, payable to God. And then we give that piece of paper to God. And we say, you don't owe it to me anymore. You hurt me, but it was a sin against God too. And I've given it over to God. You're going to have to deal with God about this. Um, I'm taking myself out of the punishment and the revenge loop. And that's God's realm. And so you need to deal with God about being forgiven for your sins, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to punish you for them. I, I take myself out of the loop. You don't owe it to me. You owe it to God. I have, 
I have endorsed endorsed the check and said payable to God, endorsed that promissory note to say, it's yours, God, they owe it to you now, you deal with it. And I'd take myself out of it. And And that doesn't mean that I don't sometimes still feel anger because there are wrong things. If someone has sexually abused a child, I mean, when we hear about that, we get angry about that, even when we don't know the child or the person, but we're angry about the sin in the world and the hurt that, that our sinful actions cause. It, it's, in, it's unfair. When we read stories of injustice, it's unfair and it's wrong and, and it makes us angry. And that's good. We should be angry about those things. But the Bible tells us to be angry and not sin. And so we need to not let our anger turn into bitterness. And we say, God, I hate that the world is this way. You take care of this. I give this over to you. And and when that wrong was done against us, it we can still be wrong. We can still be angry in the the general sense of I I hate that this kind of thing happens in the world and that it happened to me. But I can let go of my anger against that person directly, and particularly against my desire for revenge, and say, God, I give that to you, and I turn it over to you. But just because sometimes we may feel a bit of anger again doesn't mean that our forgiveness didn't count. We could say, God, I already gave it to you. Here, I give you this anger too, and help me to help me to feel the way you want me to feel. In conclusion, just encourage you to, to forgive for Christ's sake. Because we have been forgiven by Jesus, it's appropriate for us to forgive others because we have we have been forgiven. We know what it's like to be the one who's let off the hook for the wrong things that we did. We can turn around and act like Jesus and show that kind of mercy to others. And don't let the human limitations, just because we can't do forgiveness perfectly or we can't do it quite on time or we can't do it so it lasts forever, or we can't do it without any leftover feelings. Don't let that stop you from doing as much as you can. And, and remember, it's, it's really not you. Jesus, who from the cross could forgive the whole world and particularly those who nailed him there. If he lives in your heart, he can forgive those against whom you hold bitterness. And you can be set free. Someone says when we, when we forgive we release a prisoner from the dungeon and we discover that the prisoner was us. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you forgave us and we thank you that you have given us not only the example, but the possibility, the ability, the freedom to be able to forgive the miraculous ability that you will forgive through us, that we don't have to be tied to our past hurts, that we can be forgiven and we can forgive. And Lord, we thank you that that, that forgiveness is such an important part of, of healing. Lord, bitterness can make us sick and, and, and bitterness can block your healing flow in our lives. And so, Lord, we, we want to be whole and holy. And so we want to forgive and we thank you that you you help us. And we ask that your Holy Spirit now would bring to our minds and our hearts anyone that we need to forgive, any bitterness that we've been holding on to that's poisoning our lives. And we trust that you will help us to let go of that, that you're willing to take it to yourself and to deal with it yourself. We ask these things in Jesus' name, who purchased our forgiveness on the cross and who rose again and gave us his spirit and his life. We pray it in his name. Amen. Forgive our sins as we forgive. You taught us more to reach
and bless the unforgiving heart that moves on wrong and will not let old bitterness depart. In blazing light, your cross reveals the truth we dimly knew. What trivial debts are owed to us? How great our debt to you. Look, cleanse the depths within our souls, and bid resentment cease. Then bound to all in bonds of love, our lives will spread your Go forth now in the amazing grace of God, knowing that you are forgiven and that you are free to forgive. And may you walk in that freedom now and forever. Amen.